Boys on the Side, the 1995 movie review and thoughts in celebration of Women's History Month. I'm going to start by telling you this was a movie that I really love, though I acknowledge aspects of it are problematic. I'm going to try to explore them. This video will have some jokes, none of them expensive members of minorities, and we'll get into some serious topics. I realize this video is long, and we really can to make it worth your time. I start the video with a review where I'm almost definitely not going to spoil anything. If I, at some point in the review, decide I want to spoil something, I'm going to verbally warn for you, so hold up an index finger until I'm done with the spoilers. You can mute and skip ahead and you see me lower my index finger. As soon as you're in the review itself, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including discussing the ending in detail. I am a lifelong feminist, but I am an allosis head man, and as such, I have never lived as a woman, cis, or trans. I try to show empathy and listen to the lived experience of women. I am aware I have dead spots. As such, I might accidentally say something ignorant, so if any feminist woman is bothered by something I say in one of these videos, please let me know. I am open to editing that part out, and if it is a case where the whole video is bad, take it down. Everything I say about any minority that I don't belong to, which is all of them, is based on what I've heard left-leaning members of those minorities say, for example, in YouTube videos. And... Let's see... I think that is... Yes, so this movie is rated R, and yeah, um, a lot of it is for the the profanity, also some sexuality. So the the let's see the the IMDb Parents Guide rates sex and nudity, violence and gore, and frightening and intense scenes as moderate, alcohol, drugs and smoking as mild, and profanity as severe. And yeah, the there's a lot of of pretty harsh language here, which hilariously had one like Christian you know review that was linked to in the MDB external review section. You know they went over all the good things about the movie, and then they're like, but it has swearing, so I can't really recommend it. Which is wow. But yes. Um, I think it uses the R rating well. I think this movie would have been very awkward if it was PG-13. And, you know, the, the, when, when it comes to, to stuff like swearing, you know, sometimes it can come across as performative, like, oh, wow, you really want 13-year-old boys to like this movie, don't you? That really isn't the case here. It felt organic. And, you know, it's one of those movies where there are certain characters who swear a lot like Whoopi Goldberg's Jane and she's you know supposed to, it's it fits with her you know background she is a, a more hardened person and then there's some who don't swear very much like Mary Louise Parker's Robin you know, it, it would feel very awkward if it was PG-13 and, you know, the, the harshest that, that you know, you'd hear was, was like a, a dam or maybe even a hell. It, it, you know, yeah. So, and let's see. Yeah, and, and the sexual, sexual material also feels like it comes very organically out of the story and the characters. And that is about, yeah, so I have only watched this once, and I record this just after I finished watching it, and let's see, yeah, so the movie is set in 1995 when it also came out, and the let's see yeah uh the plot i'm just gonna quote imdb here because they do a really great job yeah robin shares a ride in her car with jane from new york to los angeles they stop at jane's friend holly's place in pittsburgh and take with take her with them west making a stop in tucson the three very different women become close friends and yeah, this is one of those movies that really make you empathize with 
the the various characters in it. I hesitate to call it an outright character study, but it certainly leans heavily in that direction. You know, it is in part a road trip movie. I forget the source, but I run once, you know, so I've, I've read someone say that for road trip movies, the soundtrack is crucial. And yeah, I, you know, I'm working my way through. I've seen maybe half a dozen by this point, and for sure, the best of them definitely have great soundtracks. This is one of those cases. And the, the, let's see. Yeah, it is very much this thing of, you know, you have these very different people, and, and some of them you might at first get, an, you know, you might get a negative first impression of them, but over the course of it, you know, you see, yeah, you know, we're all human. The, you know, it's, it's very much trying to, to promote you know, especially between women, obviously, but yeah, you know, recognizing each other's, you know, humanity and and trying to find common ground instead of letting things separate us that really don't have to. I I quite appreciate it. There's this. I don't know if I want to give away, but there's two characters. One of them is gay and the other is straight, and they talk about the gay straight thing without either of them making it seem well I'm right you know you we should all be you know the the gay one doesn't say everybody should be gay the straight one doesn't say everybody should be straight they just talk and it's not you know I I love when when pieces of media do this because it really is important that we really you know the the depending on where you live, maybe you experience that it's just not something that's talked about. And the, you know, sadly, there is a lot of homophobia in the world. And, and watching a movie like this, you might realize, oh, well, I mean, they're kind of, they're kind of talking about it like, oh, you know, one of them likes country music and the other one prefers rock and roll. You know, it's not, like obviously it is you know sadly there there are you know there are certain places in the world where including America where there are laws that really disadvantage gay people but if you're in a relationship with someone that you know that that doesn't support those laws yeah you know it's it's healthy to be able to to just talk openly casually about it you know the the straight character never implies that gay is lesser you know they acknowledge that it's it's different and and it's also not one of those things where the moment that he the the when the straight man meets this gay person he's not like wow, you know, I have a million questions, you know, what's sex like, and all that, you know, there actually, there is one character in this who d d does the thing of, you know, I don't understand, how can gay people have sex? And this character is purely a, a bad person, you know, there's no, there's not really any redeeming qualities to that character. So, yeah, quite appreciate that, you know, because I, I can imagine some people might have watched this and been like, oh, crap, I might have actually accidentally asked a question like that. And you can appreciate you shouldn't do that. You know, that's just not a thing you should do. You know, if you meet someone who has different life experience, don't treat them like a museum exhibit. You know, talk to them like a person. And the, let's see, I think that might be about... Right, uh, I am not particularly familiar with, so so this was written by Don Roos and directed by Herbert Ross, R.I.P. I am not really familiar with the, the Roos-Ross combo. The, you know, that's right, yeah. Uh, Don Roos also wrote The Opposite of Sex, which I remember quite liking. 
but I have not watched that movie in like 20 years, if not more. Um, yeah, you know, it's, I can't, I, I don't remember that much about it, but it does have the, the killer line, let's see if I can find, just to make sure I get it absolutely verbatim, uh, let's see, here we go, yeah, um, one of the, one of the characters says, you've got a death wish, so selfish. I have one too, but I direct it towards others, which is a killer line, literally. Right, he wrote single white female also. I, I'm i afraid I don't remember much at all about that movie. Um, I mean, I, I like, yeah, uh, you know, stars Bridget Fonda and Jennifer Jason Lee. I like them a lot elsewhere, but I don't really remember. Stephen Tobolowsky is that movie? I gotta rewatch that movie. This has and Steven Weber, yeah, great cast. You know, it it was one of those Yeah. One of those thrillers for for young women about, you know, the, the nature of being a young woman in the nineties. And if we're you know, ranking those, I personally greatly prefer the hand that rocks the cradle. You know, that is my jam. And I think let's see. Of the, oh, okay, so so Ross also directed The Secret of My Success, Michael J. Fox, oh, is that, I think that might be one of those 80s movies where Michael J. Fox has romantic tension with, where Michael J. Fox plays a character who has romantic tension with someone he's related to. I might be mistaking it for another movie. There's at least two of those, and that's too, too many. Um, but, but yeah, you know, it's, it's, one of those, it's one of those 80s movies where someone, you know, the protagonist, you know, makes a lie about something in their, their life to, to succeed in, like, big business kind of thing. Again, you know, that, that was quite the subgenre. Which, you know, there were there were some some pretty good ones, in, in that. But yeah, um, let's see. There are, let's see. Yeah, there there are enough movies made. You know, there's not enough, but there's enough of them. You know, enough movies made for women. I suppose we can refer to them as chick flicks, though. Note that I use that term neutrally, not derogatorily. There's enough of those that have in common that two or more women help each other when one or more of them is abused physically, maybe sexually, by at least one man. You know, men that hypothetically could help don't, and these women can really only rely on each other. There's so many movies like this, there's probably a subgenre specifically for them. The fact that this is so common really underlines how big the real world problem actually is, you know, and and once I've said that, I do of course have to address, yes, I will 100% be doing a video on Thelma and Louise. And this movie actually makes a direct reference to that. Let's see. And, yeah, so the subgenre of chick flick is often seen as primarily for women. A lot of the criticisms that are aimed at it are displaying misogynistic double standards. For example, saying, oh, the movies are all predictable, star all the same people, or made by a lot of the same people behind the camera. These things are also true of a lot of action movies, thought of as primarily made for men. It is entirely possible to find a chick flick that has incredible acting, deep themes. You just need to know where to look, just like with action movies. See. And right, I recommend reading reviews from critics and users on Rotten Tomatoes Metacritic and I the yeah, IMDb yeah, let's see. Um right, uh I I've, I've seen some say that um, you know, they think the movie is like trying too hard to to make the audience sad and it definitely does you know it very much 
is is going for that. I can appreciate that that some of the stuff in it maybe is primarily there for that purpose, but I don't think there's anything in the movie that just felt like, oh, you just got to get rid of that entirely. You know, I, I really appreciate it. Like, th th when this movie came out, and sadly still somewhat today, there was a lot of, I refuse to use the exact term, but let's say shaming women for sexuality. And it's, it's one of those ridiculous, again, double standards. You know, a, a woman who does it, ah, you know, you don't know about that. But a man who does it, ah, high five, bro, nice, you know. And, yeah, the, the, it's also this thing where, like, women aren't treated well if they go out of their way to not be sexualized. That just may, then, then there's just a lot of young men who think, oh, they're boring, I can't be with her. You know, so it's, it's lose-lose. But this movie actually does have empathy. It does make some, you know, there's some things where it's like, okay, this is, not the most sympathetic portrayal, but there are a lot of things where you can clearly tell, you know, yeah, you know, this is the, the character played by Drew Barrymore, Holly. You know, yeah, you know, Holly, she's not a perfect person, but no one in this movie is, is perfect. And she's not really lesser like the you know all three of the women have certain things that you know make their lives difficult and and you know if you were trying to write a flawless aka boring character you might not let them say and do certain things but it's not treated as if it's you know th there were a lot of movies that I suppose maybe not as much by the the mid '90s. You know, th this is maybe reflecting the fact that there was more willingness to to see them as as people. This was also around the time where Kelly Bundy, who started as an extremely one note, you know, just a, a walking punchline punching bag. Yeah, around this time there was, you know, I, I hesitate to say depth. But certainly she had some really admirable qualities as well. She really stood up for her brother when that was really called for, for example. So, so yeah. The, there, there was a time where if a Hollywood movie implied the woman was sexual outside of marriage, it basically said, you know... We gotta stop these broads, or they're gonna bring down modern society, you know. And I really appreciate that this one is just like, you know, there's some, there's a little bit of eye rolling going on, but it's like, no, she's, she's a person, she's a human being. And you know, it, it is the kind of thing I, I've seen some people say, ah, oh, you know, Drew Barrymore, not a lot of range, some of the best actors. In, in the history of, of filmmaking have not had a huge amount of range. She really does nail this this role and you know some, some people say oh you know she's just playing herself. That's not actually that easy. I you know if you're one of those people who say that I'm not saying you have to show it to anyone but you know maybe videotape yourself uh, what's the word? You know, you just, like, stand in front of a mirror, act into the mirror, videotape it, and then afterwards watch it back. I suppose you don't need the mirror for that anyway. And see if you actually think that it's, you know, and, and you know, play yourself in a, very, in, a, in a variety of situations. Like, sure, if you are currently happy, it's not super difficult to portray yourself being happy but if you're happy right now and you have to shoot a sad scene that is more difficult and you know it's not feasible to always make sure that you're feeling exactly what your character is feeling sometimes that's just really gonna 
because you might have to shoot a really sad scene and then right after shoot a really happy scene and if you let yourself get extremely sad you know it might take a while for you to recover and be able to play happy so let's see I'm not gonna give away whether the movie's ending is happy or sad but it does fit with what came before I think the ending is great and I am not alone in that. The movie doesn't have a lot to, to keep you watching after the end credits start rolling, but I do recommend there's there's this short montage of, of clips from the movie, which just, yeah, very, very nicely done. And... Yeah, so I've already talked some about, yeah, you know, Drew Barrymore, this was kind of the image she had by this point. So the movie is playing into that. And yeah, you know, this is one of, of a number of roles that Whoopi Goldberg took around this time where, yeah, you know, this kind of street smart somewhat hardened but you know there is goodness in kind of you know roles and yeah um she the the um, she's really really good at it you know it's it's no wonder that there were uh, a bunch of these and yeah this is this is yet another where she's she's quite good and and this is also one of the ones where she portrayed a a lesbian and that actually you know it's it's this thing of technically you know she she isn't a, a lesbian but she has met uh, a number of them and and felt comfortable you know yeah, the the uh, I know I had a quote around here somewhere. Uh, would be um yeah, you know she said I I know lots of them and I've played them on television and there's actually there's this um this quote. In there's a line in this movie that the she that's something that that she that that Whoopi Goldberg has said in you know in in interview also so I could imagine that ah uh, let's see was it maybe I swear I'm not gonna spend forever on this. Um, yeah, I, I can't help but wonder if there's maybe a, you know, it, maybe it was something that she was able to add to the, the script. And I th I'm not sure, I'm, I'm not super familiar with Mary Louise Parker. Um... I thought she did really well here. She's very much like the most of of the three women. She is the one who is the most like restrained and and kind of, you know, and the others help her, you know, try to encourage her to to come out of her shell. And you know, it's it's very much this thing of you would never think that Jane and Robin would get along, you know, just the, the, yeah. And I, I really appreciate that the movie shows that it is possible, you know, if you, if you spend enough time with someone and you get to know them and, you know, you're both able to see each other vulnerable, yeah, something can really happen. You can actually become friends, even though you might seem too different for for that. 
Matthew McConaughey, um, I've seen others, you know, some, some say, oh, it's not really his best work. He's not able to bring a lot to the character, you know, considering how much screen time the, the character has, it is perhaps the, the least fleshed out character with that much screen time. You know, he brings his charisma to it, which, you know, quite immense. And, yeah. Um, I, I thought that he made the character feel as real as, as he could for, you know, yeah. The, and, and, you know, at first I thought, oh, this is the comic relief, but they do actually give him nice dramatic moments also. Oh, and by the way, this is not a. This movie does not hate men. It's just saying some men are terrible, and sometimes, you know, sadly, other men are not going to help against those men. But there are multiple white male characters in this movie that are clearly good people. I quite enjoyed ja uh, James Remar as Alex. Uh, you know, the. Yeah. Just, you know, really, really down-to-earth, kind of, you know, likable person. Billy Worth does a great job as Nick. Like, you really hate his guts. Just such... My God, he is just terrible. And, yeah, you know, I, I appreciate when, you know, a... A white male actor is is willing to play a, a character that is just unbearable to to show what a lot of women sadly currently are dealing with and shouldn't have to deal with. And I think that might be about right. Yes, uh, Anita Gillette plays Elaine, Robin's mother, and. Yeah, just does a, a really great job. And there's more to the character than I thought when I first saw her. Dennis Butsikaris does a great job playing a really unpleasant person. Just, yeah, um, fantastic job. Um, I think that is... Yeah, um... I quite appreciate about the movie that, you know, it acknowledges the racial diversity of at least some parts of America, and you know, the the yeah, it's it's not trying to make saints out of every person of color. You know, one of the first things we learn about Jane is actually that she is is racist against people from the Middle East, you know, it, th thankfully, it does not do a thing of like, oh, you know, black people can be racist against white people, as if that really matters very much in America, where white pe we white people have all the power, you know, but the, the yeah, um, it's not making saints out of them, it does explore some of their culture, and, yeah, just, like, a lot of the time, characters don't even say, oh, look at that, there's a, there's a person of color, that person has a different skin color and culture than me. You know, no, it's just, it's everyday kind of stuff, you know. As long as you're not treating a person of color badly, yeah, you know, you can have a relationship that, you know, it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be about the the different your 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 differences. You know, it can it can focus on common ground. You know, obviously it has to start with us white people being good allies. But once you're you're past that, not everything has to. Be, you don't constantly have to talk. You know, if they want to, obviously, be open to that. But you don't have to constantly be be talking to them about, you know, 
these these cultural differences that can make them feel again like a museum exhibit and but but yeah you know greatly appreciate you know for a movie that does a lot of the time center whiteness though thankfully not also maleness it does feature these you know people of color and they're not just like purely defined by the yeah their their ethnicity and it also does some to explore what it's like you know it it does show racism and the yeah just you know these various kinds of bigotry the the dialogue is great there's a lot of lines where it is very much yeah um the the um, each character has a distinct voice and the the um, yeah you know over the course of it it's it's like you can hear a line from this movie and you know even if it's yeah even if you haven't watched it yet if you just hear a line from part of this movie if you know where this you know yeah if yeah if you know where the characters saying these lines start out you can tell oh this must be pretty late in the movie because there's clearly they've gone through growth you know they're not statues they don't just start out one way and stay that exact way you know again that makes for fairly boring characters and this is about the characters more than the, the plot the plot is fairly episodic you know as is the case with a number of, of road trip movies and yeah there are 24 total entries in the IMDb quote section and all of them are quite good and yeah the cinematography is is great there's a couple of really standout moments and the editing is also great there's some very gutsy choices in in some of the editing here some have found them to be manipulative and i can appreciate you know i can't really claim that they're not manipulative i just think that they they do a good job of just underlining you know this is life sometimes it does swing between extremes and let's see yeah um i already mentioned the the let's see yeah the the score both the score and the licensed music are great really great choices you know, if if you can make it happen, if you can have your characters like singing along to music and and dancing, that's just really humanizing. Now, obviously, there's a lot of movies that can't accomplish that for various reasons, but it's just like it's very very difficult to have like you know really severe you know bigotry against someone if you see them just doing something that, you know, yeah, something that we all do. And let's see. That is about... Yeah, so this movie is... Uh, hold on. Um, yeah, an hour and 52 minutes without end credits. And an hour and 56 and a half minutes with and I was never bored there are definitely times where like for a chunk of this I thought oh we're gonna keep moving fairly fast and then something happens and it kind of slows down a bit I didn't think it was bad it was unexpected I think it worked but yeah you know this is not a road trip movie where they're just driving all the time you know the the way that 
Blues Brothers, Plan B, and Road Trip, the 2001 movie, you know, those are, you know, we get on the road pretty fast, and then there's a lot of road trip stuff. In this one, you know, not all of it is. And... Let's see. Yeah. Uh, so the best element of this is its examination of important themes. In in some ways, the the movie has dated poorly, and that's probably the worst thing about it. I don't think it's a huge problem. I th I think. Yeah, I, I would have liked if it explored a little more the, the racism expressed by Jane. You know, I, I didn't think that that was really, you know, it's, it's not that the movie really makes it seem like, oh, you know, so this is just okay. It's, it's clearly presented as, as something bad, but it doesn't really get too much into it, and I think it might have strengthened the movie if it had let's see um but i do really appreciate you know i i think it's important to have depictions of you know when when you have a a black character that is flawed in in various ways but also really you know it underlines she is a human being you know she's not the fact that she has flaws does not mean she's like an evil person or something when it then acknowledges yes it is possible for black people to be racist against other ethnic minorities you know i i think it's it's we have to be careful not to make just complete saints out of you know, it's, it's possible to humanize someone and say this is a good person overall without saying, the you know, they don't feel any sort of bigotry. It, it's, it's, you know, a, I think we probably do all feel at least a little bigotry. And the, you know, what you want to do is try to recognize your bigotry and try to improve, you know. Because if every movie says, you know, black people are saints, they don't, they're not racist. And then you meet a black person in real life and you see that them express racism towards a different ethnic minority. You might be like, oh, this is one of the bad ones. This is not a good black person, you know. So, yeah, gotta, gotta be careful with with stuff like that now yeah so the something I saw others criticize about this was they said it was overly manipulative it keeps going back and forth between really dramatic scenes and really funny ones and yeah I I appreciate that opinion you know I've said before I think I'm not saying every movie has to have humor I I do think that some movies it is good that there's almost no humor in them sometimes no humor but I do maintain that having humor in a movie can serve other genres it doesn't have to detract from them it can if you're if you're handling it wrong it can but I personally felt that the fact that Sometimes this is very dramatic. Some have said melodramatic, and other times it's it's like really really funny. Like I laughed out loud a number of times watching this. You know, I I think the two strengthen each other because, like I said earlier in this video, that is that is life. You know, sometimes something you know is is really positive, and sometimes it's really negative. And I don't think that we need too many more movies that only say one of those things you know I've, I've recently I've at this point watched almost everything Pixar almost all of the feature length Pixar I, I would like to watch the shorts I, I don't know why I keep getting away from that anyway the the I, I seriously appreciate how they're able to you know similar with the with classic animated Disney I, I haven't watched the very most recent ones 
I, I think the last one I watched was probably Tangled. I am going to watch the more recent ones, but but yeah, you know they're they're willing to say, you know, which sadly there is media for for children. Obviously, if you're talking like like toddlers, they're maybe not ready for for the negative. You gotta give them as safe an upbringing as as at all possible. Obviously. But you know, once they, I, I don't, I don't know the exact age, uh, maybe seven years old or something. Once they're able to process, you know, yeah, it's it's really good to to convey to them, you know, some some things make you feel good, some things make you feel bad. You're not gonna feel good all the time. But you're not gonna feel bad all the time either. You know that's that's a really important because that is the thing. When you're sad, it can feel like you'll never be happy again. You know, and that's something that's really important that we learn as as children. You know, it's you know if it's, obviously there are situations where it is extremely difficult, but. You know, it's it's your your life is going to to if you can every so often find something that makes you really really happy. You know that can make your life much much easier. And let's see. So so yeah, the thing I was most worried about before watching this was that the depiction of a lesbian would be an offensive stereotype. And it it really wasn't. She's very much humanized. You know, she's not this just terrible man hating. You know, she she has positive relationships with straight men. You know, and the let's see. You know, she only hates you know really awful men. And let's see. Yeah, the thing I was most looking forward to was positive depictions of women and the problems and also joys that they deal with, more so than men, sometimes even unlike men. And yeah, I think the movie did a really fantastic job on that. And yeah, this is actually the case where I don't think the trailer gave too much away. I, you know, yeah, really, really. They, they did a. a really good job on that and it also does not misrepresent the movie and the cover and poster also don't give too much away there are some reviews that do uh, you know some yeah you'll want to be careful with that there's there's a thing you know you might figure it out early in the movie I don't think you should go into the movie knowing it and that is a about yes that brings us to rotten tomatoes where it has a 73 percent from critics based on 113 reviews 83 of which are fresh the average score is 6.50 out of 10 and it has a 69 nice from audiences based on more than 25,000 ratings the average rating is 3.7 out of 5 and the consensus, pack your bags and leave them boys on the side to experience the kind of sisterhood that makes you laugh and cry through the bumpy, quirky road of life. Very well put. And on Metacritic, it has a 60 from critics based on 18 reviews, 11 positive, 5 mixed, 2 negative. What is the negative one say? Oh, right, the, yeah, yeah, one of the negative ones does not like something that happens fairly late in the movie, and I can appreciate that, and, let's see, yeah, and the other negative review says, there's, the, I'm just going to read this, because this is actually, this is quite well written, uh, Ruse and director Hen Herbert Ross, Pave the long and grinding road to self-fulfillment with miles and miles of counterfeit poignancy. So I don't quite agree with that, but that is that is well written. And it expresses quite well what they disliked about it. Users gave this a 6.8 out of 10. 
eight user ratings, no user reviews, six positive, one mixed, and one negative. And let's see. Yeah, so the IMDB, let's see, there are currently 59. There really should be way more. IMDB user reviews, 49 if you hide spoilers. I read all 59 of them. And let's see, one person gave it a 1 out of 10, another gave it a 2, another gave it a 3, one gave it a 4, a 4 gave it a 5, another 4 gave it a 6, 7 gave it a 7, 8 gave it an 8, appreciate the symmetry, 11 gave it a 9, and 12 gave it a 10. So, yeah, for sure more people lean positive than negative, and... It currently has a 6.5 out of 10 based on 14,000 ratings from users. 22.3% gave it 7, another 22.3 gave it 6, 15.7 gave it 8, 11.1 .1 gave it 5, 9.8 gave it 10, 7.1 gave it 9, 5.1 gave it 4, 2.9 gave it 3, 2.3 gave it 1, and 1.3 gave it to two. So again, more more positive than negative by a lot. Though it wasn't, you know, yeah, it's more sevens and sixes. Now that is about what I have the yeah. Um, the, the, yes, I also rate this a 7 out of 10, and that is it for the review itself. So from here on out, there will be spoilers for the entire movie. I'm going to start by going through it chronologically, but I might spoil late stuff very early but yeah the starting with the, the notes taken while watching that's what it's called there we go so yeah um so jane's song does not go incredibly well which you know it must be really frustrating to to be performing you know she's giving it her all and she's doing quite well. I saw some people say that they didn't think Whoopi Goldberg sang well in this. I absolutely disagree. I thought she did a really, really great job. And see, yeah, there's even this this woman who's like laughing and not paying any attention. She doesn't even recognize Jane when when she you know goes there. And so she tries to make the woman feel bad about oh you know you've got this this booger uh, you know oh this which, yeah, the, the, I, I honestly, I, I will never in a million years tire of scenes of, like, service workers and, and that level of, I suppose, technically, a, you know, if you're performing in a band, you're not necessarily, I'm not sure that's called a service worker, but, you know, that, you know, people that are expected to work hard, but not ex but not given very much respect from sadly a lot of people when they're able to like get a little bit of revenge on on you know someone that yeah um, big fan of those so, yeah and yeah and here we see the the yeah there's the the cab driver you know. And I, I do also appreciate, you know, he is also being fairly aggressive, which, you know, I I have not spent very much time in New York, but I do hear cab drivers can be fairly aggressive verbally. You know, like he could just say, get, please get out of my way, you know, I'm trying to drive here. But, you know, yeah, he, he says something like, get the fuck out of my way, and then she says, get the fuck out of my way. And, and, you know, says the, the racist trope of, you know, go back to your own country. I do really appreciate, you know, I've already mentioned, I, I do think 
you know fiction should accurately depict you know as as nice as it would be if if you know the ethnic minorities were were never racist towards you know members of of other ethnicities you know sadly it is that thing of you know the the more you know what's the saying hurt people hurt people you know if someone is treated really badly, and we're not just talking about, oh, you know, sometimes someone will write something mean on their locker in high school. No, there's literal laws that make it harder to get by, even though you've done nothing wrong, if you're a person of color. But, yeah, you know, that, that can sometimes lead to them, you know, taking it out on, on someone else. But something else I appreciate about this, this scene, in addition to this honesty, is... The, the honesty about the, the nature of, of bigotry, it doesn't really make any sense. Like, what... Are, are you saying that if there were... Like, let's hypothetically say that Jane got her wish. Let's say that there were no Muslim immigrant driving taxis in New York. Would that not mean that there might be a taxi in her way and the cab driver would be... Like, have you met white people? A lot of us are terrible... And, you know, we can get very verbally aggressive when we don't get our way. There's, you know, white privilege comes into it. You know, it's not, that like, would you be happier if it was a white guy? You know, it, it doesn't actually make any sense. And that is the, the you know, at, at the center of all bigotry is just emotion that has not yet been processed into any kind of logical thinking, you know. Like, it's this thing of, you're in my way right now, so I'm going to say something really harsh about you then. Like, he didn't, nothing about what he did or said there had anything to do with him being a Muslim. Like, and, and they easily could have, uh, you know, which I appreciate they, they didn't, because even before 9-11, America really hated Muslims. You know, like, they, they could have had him say something that would be specific to a Muslim, like, if he said, you shouldn't be, you know, you should cover your hair, you're not in your home, or something like that, you know, that would make it specific, and then her saying something against Muslims, you know, still wouldn't be okay, but at least there would be some kind of logic to it, but no, it's just, you know, she's just picking a thing that, you know, like, she literally might as well have said, why are there so many fucking cabs in New York, you know, that, that would actually have made more sense, that's something that I've heard a lot of New Yorkers say, let's see, and, and this thing of, you know, at the same time, a lot of people of color struggle to, to get a cab, you know, that could have been it, again, that would have been logical, but that's not where the, you know, and it's also clear because we've just seen her be rejected, you know, the band's not doing, you know, wonderfully, they were just, like, fired from this place, you know, they're not supposed to come back for more gigs or something like that. She's, she's frustrated, she's taking it out on, on this guy. And there's the, the thing about, you know, oh, you know, like, this, she's like, Yoko, she's, she's totally gonna ruin, you know, um, I'm afraid that I haven't, the the I I would very much like to I, I I am almost definitely going to get I can't believe I'm blanking on the the uh, I'll have it momentarily the the thing is called Nebula I'm almost definitely going to get Nebula um, I gotta make sure that I'm not like you know can't it can't break the bank and I I like the idea of the the lifetime membership because I understand that you know, giving them that much money all at once, that's easier for them to, to like, budget things, and, if, you know, yeah, so, so I really appreciate it, but I'm gonna link in the, in the description. Lindsay Ellis left a, a you know, put a teaser here on, on YouTube, it, uh, yeah, two months ago, called The Ballad of John and Yoko, where she addresses this, misunderstanding this this misogynistic notion that oh you know Yoko bro broke up the Beatles I'm not gonna try to restate what she said it's it's a 11 minute video 11 minutes she does a really great job you know going over the yeah and let's see 
I quite like when when Jane and Robin talk about you know it's such a it's such a little thing, but just this you know J Jane is talking about you know okay so I I gotta try to go to L.A. for for some auditions you know it's not really going so well here in New York you know and and Robin is like you know. I actually, I, I've sung a little, oh yeah, I'm like, oh yeah, you know, it's just a minor little talent show thing. I, I didn't actually get very far in it, you know. And you can just see on Jane's face, it's like, oh, right. That's another thing that's like, I I would like to think that I myself have never done it, but honestly, I, I probably have at least once. That's another thing that just, if at all possible, if you're talking to someone who performs for a living, maybe don't talk about, oh, you know, I kind of like to, to perform as, you know, just, if you're, a prof if you're a fellow professional, you can talk craft, obviously, and you can talk about, oh, you know, I thought you did a great job, your performance was really great, but this thing of, like, talk, you know, because, like, Jane is talking about her career, and then Robin is talking about, like, oh, you know, I, I like to think, I like to sing, and, this, you know, it's just, it was, yeah, from right away, like Jane and Robin, the, they don't seem like they mesh at all, as, as Jane points out, which, you know, it is kind of adorable, you know, Robin's like, I, I think we mesh really well, you know, she's, she's always trying to, to mediate, there, there's not even an open conflict there yet. But she's already trying to like say, you know, this this will work out just fine, you know, kind of, and and that is, you know, she's that was probably something that, like, we we later learn about her her background. I can imagine when she was a kid, she probably had to comfort her mother Elaine a lot, you know, the the they both lost the I. Uh, what was his name? Tommy, I think. You know her younger brother and Elaine's son, and then the you know Robin's father, Elaine's husband, left. You know, so it was just the two of them. You know, being a single mother is very difficult. Robin consoled her, and then when you know she came of age, she realized you know maybe I could do this for for a living. Maybe I can you know talk positively because that is the thing you know she, she, I, what, what did they say her job was? she's like selling apartments or so uh, re real estate I think she works in real estate yeah you gotta you gotta be good at understanding other people you, you can't be impatient if you work in real estate you're really gonna struggle then you know you gotta you gotta understand what it is people are looking for and try to speak to those needs so you know, very nicely, to, great emotional intelligence on display in the writing there. I'm not saying that every single person who grows up in that kind of environment ends up in real estate, or that every person who is in real estate had a background like that, but it is a very logical, you know. I also appreciate, you know, when, once we meet Nick, like, almost everything he says and does is just awful. There is the detail that, you know, he's been he's not on drugs anymore so he he sold the drugs that he had for money but then he gets drunk and when he gets drunk he he stop you know he's not able to to think clearly which you know that is a, a yeah a lot of people deal with that and it's again it's this it this it's this sort of thing where you know i i don't think it's i don't think it's very useful when there's a, a piece of media that just says this is bad if it's something that well, what's the alternative and that's some you know you often see like when conservatives want to rile up their voters they say oh you know black people are bad immigrants are bad and it's like what do you want them to do do you want people who are coming to america in search of a better life you know some of them are actually refugees some of them are fleeing horrific things you want them to just stay there and die. It it just it doesn't make any sense. And here, like, it's very clear. And again, I'm not saying that he would necessarily think of this or that Holly would be able to convince him. But for Nick, you know, don't drink. If 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 you get this 
angry and irrational when you drink, you ha that that's a problem. You have a, a drinking problem, you know, not the kind that we see in the movie Airplane. If yeah, I I really appreciate that. Is he's not just belligerent all the time. He gets belligerent when he drinks, and he refuses to stop drinking, and that's the the problem. And let's see. Yeah, and and <laughs> I like the thing of you know Robin's like no, no smoking in the car. Whatsoever. <laughs> I think that was implied. Yes, yes, Jane. I do believe Robin meant whatsoever. You know, and it's, it's again like I don't. Jane isn't thinking. You know, oh, we can maybe we can barter. Maybe I can convince her, or you know, she's just she's verbalizing. She's so stunned. You know, the idea of not smoking. You know, yeah. Which yeah, that is that is a pretty significant. That's really going to cause friction someone who smokes all the time you know she can't even imagine not smoking in the car you know she's not like no smoking in the car gotcha you know which yeah the the like you know years ago i i you know i was i was friends with the smoker uh, we we kind of we're we're no longer in contact with each other but the which had nothing to do with the smoking but yeah you know we were yeah she had come over we were we were talking and she was like you know she was feeling like smoking and she just asked where in the house is it okay for me to smoke and you know i said i, I prefer no smoking indoors and she was like gotcha and we stood you know right outside the the house and she smoked and we continued talking you know it doesn't have to be a huge problem but clearly, Jane is so used to, to smoking. And I will also say, you know, you're going to spend a lot of time together in that car. If you're used to, if one of you is used to smoking and, and the other one refuses to allow smoking, yeah, that's going to, you know. Let's see. And and we have the, yeah, uh, I, I quite appreciate the, the intercutting as both of them are preparing and it's this thing of like Jane pretty much did say no but Robin you know still shows up and it's like you want to go because the you know yeah I I don't want to I don't want to be alone you know that is at the end of you know she says I don't think it's safe you know that is sadly true there are a number of situations where a, a woman by herself is not safe I I really get the sense that she's just she she really craves companionship. And let's see. Yeah, and we get the first of a couple of flashbacks that are in black and white. And let's see. Yeah, I, I will say the, the thing about, you know, oh, Robin's six-year-old brother died, uh, you know, or Robin's brother died at age six from cancer, that did feel like quite the bombshell out of nowhere, like lightning from a clear sky. It just, that, I, I didn't think that was the, the best handled, and I say that as someone who has lost people to cancer. I don't have a problem with it coming up in movies. I'm saying you got to be delicate with it. And yeah, we get the first, you know, in in retrospect, hint. We realize it was a hint. You know, Robin vomiting in the in the bathroom. You know, yeah, that was that's because of the the AIDS, which is also why she gets tired a lot, which we're told later and you know and and you have this thing of you know robin says, says oh, i told her i would be okay not to not to go make a big deal out of it and and you know jane yeah jane walks right in and and robin's like do you ever knock not in a public bathroom no and it's one of those things you can understand from both points of view like robin wants privacy it's it's a it's not something you want to you want someone else to see, you know. 
and and Jane is like trying to help and yeah also it's a it's a public bathroom and let's see <laughs> you smell like an ashtray in Jane's defense she wasn't smoking in the car you did not say I don't want you to smoke anymore and the reason you did not say that is because that would be an incredibly jerkish thing to say to someone but yeah you know she yeah she's been smoking a lot because now she finally has the the chance I, I don't smoke but the the you know yeah um, yeah I, I mentioned you know I've I've encountered smokers you know I, in fact you know years ago shit I completely fucked it up yeah I can't I can't even do the joke now cuz it's god damn it I gotta think of something think of something sad to to yeah I build it up too much I got it okay so yeah you know years ago fuck okay think of something sad yes I have something yes there is some chance that Trump might actually get a second term. That is deeply depressing. Holy shit, I can't believe... Okay, um, maybe... Yeah, um, my girlfriend actually used to smoke after sex until we got some lube. But the... Yeah, um... <laughs> Jane is is on the phone and Robin's like I really I really want to watch the way we were you know very very adorable I'm not familiar with that one but I do love Robert Redford so and I I hear that that the movie is really really excellent and it is yeah you know Robin she's uh, supposedly we have HBO at, at this place but I can't get it on my set you know maybe we can and they end up sitting and, and watching it together even though you know they have very different tastes in, in media normally like the the music that you know there was the thing about um robin likes the carpenters and then she performs some of it and jane's like no i i know i know the song you're talking about it's not i'm not saying i have no idea what you mean i'm saying i can't believe i'm actually standing in front of someone who would honestly admit to liking the carpenters you know that's not that's not my kind of music and and yeah you know of course the the movie you know it's Jane asks Robin which which one are you the one who loved too little or the one who loved too much and Robin says uh, you know you can't trust women you know that's why she doesn't have female friends and that I also think I would have liked if later in the movie she just said I I didn't realize at the time that you were a lesbian I I shouldn't have have said that you know and yeah the let's see and and yeah we actually you know we see a little bit of internalized misogyny uh, you know which which Elaine passed down to Robin and Robin is still carrying with her this thing of you know oh you know maybe men are right women can't be trusted there's such a thing as PMS you know let's see and uh, you know whenever I hear someone say oh you can't trust women with important decisions because they have PMS have you ever seen a man a straight man who is like really attracted to a woman try to make a a you know a completely level-headed decision you know that's and that's not a, a thing on you know oh women have too much power kind of thing no I'm, I'm just saying we're not great at you know it's a it's a general human thing there's certain situations where we struggle to make informed decisions that's not you know purely women and and there's a I, I have to admit I don't know that many details about it but I, I heard in going rampant's review excellent video by the way of um, Jennifer's body 
that um, the the apparently like PMS is actually uh, yeah I'm not really seeing um, let's see yeah um, but apparently um, PMS is you know how like it's actually really exaggerated what how how the uh, what's the word the um, um the the notion that women just become you know wait did she end up there we go yeah yeah um yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and just link her video in the in the description box but yeah, apparently the the idea that women become irrational during PMS was hugely blown out of proportion. It's a misogynistic trope. You know, obviously there there is an actual biological thing called menstrual, you know, the menstrual cycle, but yeah. And let's see. Yeah, and I, I like the detail, you know. Um, Robin says, you know, she was at, she was at happy hour for three hours and only left, you know, only left with the bartender. And then Jane says, bartender's not nobody. And I quite appreciate that detail. You know, it, it's not really that Robin is saying, you know, he's, he's worthless because he's a bartender. She's just saying she was hoping that it would be someone at the, you know, yeah, that it was one of the, the men visiting the bar. But Jane, you know, being a performer, you know, yeah, she has empathy for service workers. I'm not saying Robin has zero, but she probably doesn't have quite as much as Jane. And, yeah, later we see Jane and Alex, you know, as friends, even though, like, he knows she's gay, so he doesn't think, you know, which is also, I, I love when media acknowledges, because it's a myth. It's, it's a myth that straight men will only talk to a woman if we think that we're gonna end up in bed with her you know some of the the some of my most cherished friendships have been with women where both of us knew this is not going to lead to anything you know some of them were already in a monogamous relationship some of them just weren't interested you know we weren't each other's type that sort of thing and, and, yeah, you know, Alex knows that, that Jane isn't interested, and, and Jane, yeah, isn't interested. You know, she's not talking to Alex thinking this is going to turn romantic. But, yeah, she, she gets along with, you know, she's probably met her share of bartenders and had good relationships with, you know, friendships. I mean, maybe some of them are romantic. But, you know, yeah, that, again, nice, uh, uh, credible writing there. And, 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 you know, there's, yeah, Robin says, ew, no, to the idea of, of lesbianism, which, yeah, you know, to Jane, not realizing, yeah, um, I don't, I don't think Robin's gaydar is, like, in the shop, I don't think it ever worked at all. I don't. She she has no gaydar at all. And yeah, Robin, you know, describes you know, and she she starts it by saying, "I know it's not very liberated." And I, the moment she said that, I was a little bit worried because this was a time when, let's see, I want to. I think the term is post-feminism. And it's this, yeah, uh, let's see, yeah, here we go. So this is the Wikipedia definition. Post-feminism 
is a term popularized by the mass media to describe an alleged decrease in support for feminism from the 1990s onwards. And it was this idea that the... the yeah. Um, there's a number of the... the let's see... The um, yeah, yeah, here's a um, uh, let's see, um, yeah, the the um, hmm. yes, uh, it's this thing of you know, oh, maybe feminism is not needed anymore and there were a bunch of movies and TV shows you know yeah the late 90s and, and such where you know they basically acted like feminism has already succeeded if only completely and you know women are completely equal in the eyes of the law to men and Thus, we can start making, you know, all these jokes, many of which were just misogynist. It was, it was an excuse for misogynists to be misogynistic, which you never want to give bigots an excuse to express their bigotry openly. You know, the, the yeah, I was a little worried that ro what Robin was going to say. But no, what she says is she wants the, the you know, this kind of traditional idea, you know, she wants one boy, one girl, in that order, a man, and I, f I forget what she referred to, but, you know, yeah, living together, you know, and I, you know, it, it is important to acknowledge, you know, feminism is not about women can't ever have that sort of thing. It's about women should have choices. You know, women shouldn't be forced to have the, the sort of domestic life. But if, if they're being forced to not have it, that there's a number of women who are not happy, you know, with, without it, you know, it's just, yeah. So, so I, I quite appreciate that. And, and again, the movie doesn't make it out to be all, oh, you know, can you believe her for, for wanting that, you know, like, these three very different women all have dreams and aspirations, and though they're different from one another, none of them are inherently wrong. And... Let's see... Yeah, then they, they go to pick up Holly, and Nick is... Yeah, um... It's a very credible, sadly, depiction of an abusive male partner, and yeah, the I, I saw another reviewer point out the the it was a very clunky setup. This thing of you know what's sex like without a dick, and you know Jane responds, "You tell me." You know, yeah, that was definitely you know it's. Yeah, as he's saying those words, you can tell, you know, because like, it's, yeah, it's a it's a an awkward way to to phrase it, but yeah. Uh, let's see, that brings us to the yeah. Um, Robin, you know, she was she was supposed to to stay in the car, but she comes in, like, you know, are are we going or you know, and she starts mediating and and really does do a great job because yeah you know and and I love you know the this line I think she says something like I think we're closer to common ground than you might think or so, something like that which does very much sound like something that you would say if you're trying to convince someone to buy a house that you know, right uh, they're not completely sold on it they kind of wish that there was this, this, and this in the house. You know, she says, I think we're closer to common ground than you might think. Here's the thing, you know, kind of. But, yeah, 
and and you know Holly says Nick sold the drugs and you know she asks who did who were they sold to Frank what's his number it's on the wall gotcha you know calls hands the phone to to Nick and and yeah you know he asks and gets confirmation and I appreciate this thing of you know that turns out to not be enough you know ultimately yeah he is so angry that even this because because that's if the thing you're upset about is you think someone you know let's see did he think she stole them or flushed them or something like that you know if that's what you think you know and you're and it's then proven no that's not what happened you know again if you're not already like really belligerently you know it doesn't have to be from alcohol but you know if you've worked yourself up like that you know because logically like you know your honor asked and answered you know that's that's very straightforward there's not anything there but but you know then he starts talking about you know, where's the money let's see and yeah uh, ultimately, you know, Holly does hit Nick with a bat, and I, I do think that they manage to make, you know, make the situation so tense that it felt, you know, the, the, yeah, what's the word? Um, it felt like something that Holly would actually do given the the circumstances um, let's see and and yeah you know afterwards Jane is like you know give me the bat give me the bat 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 and let me have the yeah and and you know she's I am not bringing drug money in a in a on a road trip I mean, you can't see that it's drug money. Bring half. And leave the drugs. You know, she, she knows Holly well enough. Yeah, Holly did indeed. Uh, you know, she was going to bring drugs on this. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Holly, don't tease the animals. By the way, the... the that like four second flash apparently led one rev one sometimes I, I don't think that IMDB does enough to to not I really don't think this review should have been linked in the IMDB external reviews section this one person you know wrote just a bunch of stuff about specifically Drew Barrymore and talking about oh you know this is a movie where you get to see her breasts and like I mean in his defense and I'm almost certain it's him he does go on to, to also talk about the some of the you know yeah it's more harsh elements including the the HIV and and such but and and technically his review is overall somewhat positive but yeah he he really really wanted to talk about Drew Barrymore's breasts being being visible in this movie it's just like Jesus fucking Christ and the yeah, I. In retrospect, it wasn't the best idea to take the photo. Certainly, it was a mistake to frame it, but you can appreciate her taking that Polaroid where, yeah, where she's like teasing Nick, and you know, of course, the you know, Massarelli, the scummy lawyer, just fantastic performance by Dennis Butzikaris, just loved just, yeah he's so smarmy and and just ugh, you know really really nicely done really giving like american you know lawyer yeah um 
Let's see. Yeah, and and finally, you know the yeah we get we get the realization. Finally, we get the the reveal that you know Robin has AIDS. Let's see, and and you know the let's see. Yeah, we get a little exploration of Robin's homophobia, and and you have this thing of you know, yeah, Robin is like, why why aren't you interested in me? Because you know she's lonely. She there's not that many people throughout her life that has really cared about her. So even if she doesn't want Jane, she would like Jane to want her. You know, and and Jane says you're not my type, and and Robin's like, is this a black and white thing and she says no it's a blondes and carpenters thing which again really appreciate you know because yeah sadly there are a number of, of people who and I, I don't love the the joke you know later we see that Holly's baby is is not you know not quite white you know and I mean, I think the the joke is also supposed to be this thing of, oh, she really did cheat on Nick. This is not Nick's baby. You know, I, I mean, I think that it's great that she doesn't have to, great for her character that she doesn't have to keep any part of Nick in her life. But, yeah, you know, the, there's definitely an implied, you know, discomfort at the idea of, of you know, a black man and a, and a white woman together but yeah you know that is like it's it's such a yeah we we really got to get past this notion that sadly some some people still think oh you know if if the the if white people and people of color you know have have children together that's going to be a bad thing you know like i appreciate that you know, back in the day, it basically meant that a white slave owner had raped their their slave, which you know, like technically, you're not supposed to do that. The you know, which I, I'm against rape, obviously, but it it is it is like your your this this willingness to draw some line. You know, there's also, like, I, I believe, was there, like, a penalty if you, if you beat a slave to death? Or was that only if it was someone else's slave? I, it's not something like that. It's just, like, you're willing to set some boundary, but you're not willing for those boundaries to just preclude owning human beings and, and beating them, forcing them to work for no money. You know, so, but, but yeah, you know. I appreciate that obviously, you know, yeah, slave owners raping slaves and then not taking care of the babies, you know, is is legitimately awful. So, you know, if that is what it makes you think of, then I appreciate you thinking that it's bad, but you know, love is love. You you don't choose who you you know, you you can you have some control obviously over what you do about it but if you fall in love with someone who's a different ethnicity than you that's not wrong hot take i know and the let's see um yeah they decide that they're going to stay in Tucson and you know this was what I alluded to in the in the review I did not expect them to, to stay I thought that they were gonna keep going that the entire movie was them going from place to place and ending up in LA uh, you know the like Jane does get to LA by the end of the movie but that's not without them having stayed in in Tucson for a while let's see and it is legitimately very sweet surprise Jane with the the cake and you know she's standing there you know they're they're playing music she's obviously not expecting that to to then be you know yeah that was that was legitimately a very very sweet moment and 
<laughs> they start playing Jailhouse Rock, and and Robin does the the Elvis lip thing, which just yeah again. As much as her character can be frustrating at times, and obviously we you know obviously we have empathy for her now because you know dying of AIDS is not something anybody should have to go through, especially alone, which she was at the start of the movie when she already knew she had AIDS. But yeah, you know, just like obviously I appreciate that that you know if you are a person of color and you feel like Elvis that you know. Uh, I, I feel like I heard someone say he basically like it was like colonialism with you know he he took black people's music and and you know made a lot of money off it that you know these these black people should have been making that kind of money but it is very he he was a very talented performer and let's see you know it it was pretty pretty ridiculous i i overall i maintain i love that movie but the the elvis biopic you know austin butler and tom hanks it really tried very hard to make us think that elvis really wasn't trying to to take black people's music and really downplay like he was not an unproblematic person uh, um, the, there's an excellent video on the on that, and, and talking about other aspects of the movie. Uh, um, what's her name again? Uh, Broy Deschanel. You know what? I'm just gonna I'm gonna put that. I'm gonna link that video in the description as well. There we go. Now, then we have the. What did I get to? This. Yeah, um, I like Alex saying, I think, I think heterosexuality is making a comeback. And, and, and yeah, I, I really appreciate, like, yeah, Jane and Alex talking about, you know, gay sex versus straight sex. And at no point does Alex, like, make a com you know, again, you know, AIDS comes up in the movie. And Alex, you know, clearly not gay. It's, you know, he he never says something like you know. And yeah, once he once he knows it about Robin, he never makes it about gayness because that sadly there was a while where it was perceived, and that's something this movie also helped fight back against. You know, and and an argument could be made that it was maybe a bit. You know, it would have been nice if this kind of thing had happened even further back for for a while. If if someone had AIDS in a movie or TV show, they were most likely gay, and it was a result of sex. And it's not, you know, it isn't just something that gay people get. And I really, I, I appreciate this movie acknowledging that and and putting a, a straight person if, you know it's it's something that can happen from casual sex and also just other kinds of you know like you can the uh, what was the there's that the uh, hold on I'll have his name momentarily the guy who played the predator originally Kevin Peter Hall RIP unreal talent you know like if you if you didn't already know, he played Predator, but he also played Harry in Harry and the Hendersons. Like, think about how different those characters move. You know, incredibly talented physical performer. And he died because he contracted AIDS from a blood transfusion. You know, he didn't have casual sex. And I don't think he was gay either, you know, and, and he still got AIDS. And that was, you know, it was these things, these these cases where, you know, no, this person didn't have sex with a, a gay individual, you know. And obviously it shouldn't even need to be, like, the, the moment that a lot of people are dying from something, you do what you can to stop it. Like, it, it is... I don't think we should ever forget how 
just awful Reagan was on that. And let's see. Holy crap, I complete wow. Okay. Um yes. I'm gonna have to yeah, I try to do these chronologically, but I just realized I accidentally skipped a bunch. I don't even know how I managed to not pick up holy crap. Okay, uh yes, so gonna jump a little bit back. Yes, after the yeah, not long after they the they leave behind Nick. You know, there's the the paper has the you know notes that that he died and I did see someone say would that really be in the paper already and in a in a you know by this time they've they've traveled uh, a bit so you know it's not even yeah um I think that that was basically because they wanted the visual they, they wanted Robin to be able to hold up the paper against the 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 um, what's it called the um the the car window you know but but yeah um it was legitimately pretty funny robin like trying to to scream to, to get holly's attention or yeah screaming in different ways to get holly's attention holly couldn't hear and then suddenly she's laughing and she happens to look in the direction she's like ah oh, hi and and you know robin is like pulling faces to say you know dead person and Holly thinks oh we're pulling faces I can do that and having fun just yeah it did feel like why didn't she just hold up the paper immediately but you know it, it was legitimately funny it made me laugh um, and you know she writes mort it's it's French for dead I can't write dead who's Morty Let's see, and yeah, they talk about, you know, should she go, should Holly go back or not, and I, I appreciate them bringing up abortion, and it's not treated as, of course not, under no circumstances, you know, Holly says, you know, I would feel like murderer, and, you know, I, I don't love when people say that about abortion, but I definitely do think that a pregnant person should be allowed to say, I would feel like a murderer. I, I really don't think that that's something that we, you know, and obviously it was a man writing it, it was a man directing it, but I do think that, you know, it's, it's only when you're trying to interfere with someone else's right to abortion. That's where I take issue. Let's see, and, right, and also this thing of, you know, to think I, I you know, it's, it's possible that I, I murdered the father of my child, and, you know, Jane's like, obviously you murdered him, you hit him with a bat, he's dead, and Holly's like, no, 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 I mean, it's possible that Nick's the father of the baby, and, yeah, love the montage of them driving, dancing the car, singing along, just, yeah. And, uh, let's see, yeah, and yeah, then we have the, the bit where Holly says, you know, lesbians, um, you know, what was it, they, they love a uniform, let's see. Um, it's, uh, even with gay girls, there are no guarantees. They're very emotional. That's about all I know. They love uniforms and don't break their hearts. All kinds of uniforms, especially UPS. That's something that the the I, I saw somewhere. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg also said that in interview. So it's possible that you know that's apparently something she learned from you know just mingling with you know, lesbians. And let's see. Yeah, the, the you know, the they stop over to, to take a picture and, you know, the 
yeah, Robin keeps saying there's ah, there's something there's something missing there's something we gotta do something you know, and we see this black and white flashback, you know, her her family were together there they took a picture and you know later Elaine says we weren't that happy then it was it was just you you know you're holding on to this because it's you you consider it a positive memory of of the entire family but you know. And yeah, you know, she she has this line about you know I thought if I could recreate the trip, that that would be, be good. You know, that was she she keeps thinking she she's idol idealizing this this thing. It's nostalgia. She felt happy back then. She felt safe back then, and she maybe hasn't that much since. And yeah, let's see and. Yeah, um, I really, I really love Abe's introduction, you know. Officer Lincoln here, I'm looking for a uh, Holly Polchick, about 5'4", blonde. I'd very much like to talk to her, you know, and, and like, the audience and Jane and Robert are like, oh, fuck, how did, god damn it, they, they, you know, we were hoping they'd be able to get far enough away in in time for and and you know and then Holly's like Abe you know <laughs> she's dating a cop she's that's yeah and let's see and and you know Holly told Abe all about both Jane and Robin and again you know uh, you know you have this white cop in this you know, in, in Tucson, and he's actually completely okay with a, a, you know, a black female gay individual. You know, it's, it's optimistic. I don't know how many white cops in that situation would behave like that, but I mean, if even one of them watches this movie and it's like, I didn't know we were allowed to be nice to them, you know, and and starts behaving, you know, treating them with humanity. That would be amazing. And let's see. The... Fuck! Did I write? Oh, right, right. Yeah. Um, Abe brought. Yeah. The the birthday present for Jane is is peppers from his garden. Which, I mean, it's. It's the stereotype that he's going off of, I feel like. Yeah, I, I don't know if that is, like, you know, Holly is like, oh, you're so thoughtful. I don't know if it's... Because on the, on the one hand, there is a degree of, like, acceptance there. I mean, I feel like if he shows up and doesn't give her a present, that's almost worse than giving a present that's kind of racially charged. Yeah, I... I and let's see. Yeah. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg as a character in a 90s movie dealing with a with a psychic. Yeah, uh, really made me think of, of the movie Ghost. But yeah, you know, they they had they they got something out of it, you know, this thing of, you know, at first she's like, I don't, I don't really believe this stuff, and then later she comes back, she's like, you said you could lift the curse, you know, and anything to, to try to help. I really cracked up at the, at the anatomy talk, you know, it's, I know you're trying to get me to say, pussy, but I won't, because it's not, it's just not nice, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a hoo-hoo or a sissy, and my brother had a, a dongle or, you know, just, yeah, wow. And, and you know, ultimately, um, I'm not going to repeat the word, but Jane does say the C word, see you next Tuesday. And, uh, you know, yeah, um, later on, Elaine also said, you know, she, yeah, she's talking to the, the nurse. She's like, don't be a hoo-hoo. What's a hoo-hoo? And then Elaine, you know, translates 
which was a, a really great badass little moment. And it is that thing of, you know, just because your parents say, you know, fake swear words to you, you know, they're, they're, doesn't necessarily mean that they never swear uh, around other people, you know. And... Yeah, we have one of those lines. I've seen other 90s... I've, I've seen other movies from around this... I guess the one I... One of them is from, like, 2000. But I've seen other movies from around this time where they say, you know, is it okay for the baby to have sex? And it's like, I mean, as long as you're not doing it during the actual delivery, yeah, like, you have to get very, very close to the, to the you know... I, I don't know the exact... Is it... Yeah. If you, if, you know, if you want to know, I'm sure you can... Google it, but yeah, it is okay to to have sex. It doesn't hurt the baby to to be having sex, you know, for a while during pregnancy. And and some pregnant women are still very interested in sex. You know, again, something that we we really got to get past as as a culture because it leaves some pregnant women very sexually frustrated. And sometimes their their partner is also very sexually frustrated, and it's like. My God, just fuck. You're go the baby's safe. You, if you both want it, just have you know. Obviously, you shouldn't be pressuring pressuring your your pregnant. You shouldn't be pressuring anyone into sex, you know. But yeah, let's see. Same thing for you know PMS. Some women really do want sex during that, and you know, ag again, just don't pressure them. And and if you feel like they're inviting sex because not not because they want to but because they think you'll be upset if you don't you know turn that down that kind of thing and yeah the piano as a present is legitimately very nice and we see this this party you know some celebration of the the day of the dead which again really something there's there's some white americans who really have to get over it. no they're they're not celebrating death they're trying to find, you know, they're, they're not saying, wouldn't it be great if everybody died? They're, it's their way of processing death, you know, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's something that some, yeah, I've, I'm starting to repeat myself, moving on, and let's see. <laughs> Apparently... Holly calls out Nick's name in bed with Abe, which he takes very well, considering. And I do really appreciate, you know, they, they mention, you know, this thing of he's he's dating a pregnant woman, and I think it's Jane who says, you know, he just for that alone, you know, that I, I like that, you know. And again, that's a thing, you know, if if you're a young straight man and you're like oh women don't like me there's things you you know i'm not saying you have to like go out of your way to find someone pregnant but if you're interested in someone and she reveals she's currently pregnant you know actually consider it if if you are ready to raise a child you know don't leave her just because that child isn't yours genetically speaking Let's see. There's a lot of people who it's it's great that they had a stepfather instead of the the birth father. And let's see. Yeah. Um, you know, Alex and Robin almost have sex. And yeah, you know, he reveals he does know about the the AIDS. And you know, it doesn't make him. It doesn't mean that he's unwilling to to have sex with. You know, he he just says, "Well, I'll use protection." You know, it's okay, and that is true. Uh, that it it comes down to to you know, not not everybody is, is comfortable with it, and you know, it that doesn't have to be. You know, have, um, that doesn't have to be a, a form of of bigotry it is just there is discomfort around that we we you know it's again something we we don't talk about it enough but yeah you know some some people who have aids 
do actually you know want sex some people who are who are dying of something you know they there's this really crass joke in fight club which you know the the yeah uh, i'm i'm going to watch that movie again it's been too long for me to say but i i don't know if i i feel like it it came across as kind of mean spirited not like representation yeah not not positive representation but yeah um let's see and i really appreciate that throughout this alex respects consent you know when when robin like pulls back a little he doesn't yell at her he doesn't try to force himself upon her he just tries to reassure her and when she makes it clear the answer is no he leaves and he doesn't make a big deal out of it and let's see then we have the yeah um robin says you know everything reminds me of uh, yeah you know and and i yeah i believe that is an accurate representation and and yeah jane and robin have a huge falling out over and and it is one of those things I really appreciate that is something I wish Jane had apologized for the racism and such but she does apologize for you know she should have been more you know I, I appreciate you know she didn't come out and say it but it really is and is also you know Alex shouldn't even have have guessed because it's not he shouldn't be talking to Jane about it he should talk to Robin about it or no one but the yeah you know and and yeah she says you know move and take that piano with you if you don't I swear I will leave it out in the rain which is one of those things like that is not gonna sit well with a musician someone who plays the piano is not gonna be okay with you leaving fuck me that is like just yeah that that is a, a very very harsh thing to say so yeah you know representative of of how she feels at the at the time and it it is legitimately sweet that abe is you know proposes to holly and at first she thinks he's he's joking and yeah there's the, the thing about you know Nick is is you know six feet below you know yeah and yeah and then we have the the get together with yeah um, Elaine you know sitting at the table and she's like she's lesbian she's black and you know and and the you know she's like I can't believe a black lesbian was living here and and you know yeah Robin is like Jesus Christ you know just yeah and the thing that you know she was living with you no she was she was present but we weren't together you know and and you know I I forget who started but but yeah Holly Abe and then Elaine. I forget if that's the order, but all three of them are like, were you, you know, to, to Robin about, you know, and yeah, it is just like, it doesn't even, why do you even really care other than like, it's not, why is it any of your business, you know, just, yeah. And <clears throat> let's see. Yeah, and I appreciate, you know, Elaine talking about the, the troubles of, of being a single mother. And, you know, yeah, she mentions she, you know, she is a feminist. And, and yeah, this thing, you know, she, it's, it's, um, it's, she's up, she's, the thing, the thing about the term, it's white feminism. And that doesn't mean that, oh, it's a, it's a white person working for feminism no it's it's when feminism excludes people of color and 
yeah, you know, if she's not comfortable with a black person, and she's not com she's not comfortable with a with a lesbian. So it, it you know, and and yeah, very early feminism was, you know, a, the a lot of the the white female feminists early on were, you know, thankfully this is something that feminism has since, you know, done a lot to to address. Though there are still, you know, there are white feminists still, but yeah, you know, for a while they were focused primarily on middle-class white straight women and not all the other women that feminism now seeks to help. And yeah, uh, Abe arrests Holly and I, I do a, like, you know, I mean, they have the picture. What good's the picture gonna do? And he like blew it up into a big, you know. It, is this the face of a woman? You know, just like, wow. But you know, yeah, one can, you know, we can understand how he, you know, is able to to manipulate them. And I also like. There's a point where he's like, I forget if it was when with Jane or Robin, but one of them, he's like, basic. He's supposedly asking her questions, but he's, like, facing the jury, he's, like, talking to them, you know, he's trying to convince them rather than actually, you know, try to get the truth out. And, you know, it, it was very performative, very, very realistic, you know, which, not something that all courtroom scenes, and which I love, I love courtroom scenes in, in American movies and shows, but some of them are not super realistic, but, and the, um, yeah, you know, you have this thing of the, the, the movie has spent all this time, you know, getting us to empathize with these three, and then in this courtroom, you know, this this man goes and and tries to make the three of them seem horrible you know it's it's a very accurate depiction of how law enforcement is you know there is a lot of misogyny there uh, you know any any woman who is not a perfect victim and perfect victims don't really exist everybody has some flaw yeah, you know, other than that, the, there's really not a lot of sympathy for, you know, there's, yeah. Um, and then we have, yeah, yeah, you have, yeah, uh, Ma Masarelli just, you know, at first he tries to, like, dance around, you know, asking Jane if, if she's gay and, and this thing of, yeah, you know, implying, oh, you're, you're like, lovers, and you killed him together, so your testimony is suspect. And, and there's the, you know, there's no charges against me. Not yet. Wow. And, let's see. And, and Abe says, no, I, I love Holly even more now. I do, I do appreciate, like, you know, McConaughey, he does all right, all right, all right. He's he's really. It it is a fairly thinly sketched character, as I mentioned in the review. But there is a um, an earnest, you know, like he's not going to get anything out of convincing Jane. It's not like Jane is going to be able to talk Holly out of being with Abe. He's not like, please put in a good word for me. He's like, I, you're her friend. You care about her. She cares about you. I want you to know I do love her. And it is also, you know, like, you can appreciate where he's coming from. He does legitimately believe that it's the right thing to do. And, yeah, I also really appreciate, you know, Elaine, what was the line? Something about, you know, I, I did my best. I know now it wasn't enough. And... Um, hmm. Yeah, and then we get yeah when when Robin shows up to the the trial, and 
yeah, you know, she's... It's one of those things where an American movie, you know, a character will basically state, this is what you're supposed to take away from the movie. You know, she she says, you know, when when women are close together, you know, we, we come to really care about each other. Let's see. And, you know, because of when the movie was made, it feels the need to say, I'm not saying that women are better than men, you know, as, as if you can't be a feminist without thing you know yeah of course there are some you know there's a there's a certain percentage but the majority of feminists female feminists are not looking to like just destroy men and take away all our rights let's see and then we have yeah is can, can we have a minute? And there, you know, there. Abe goes into the cell, and you know, the door locks behind. But they get, to, you know, and for a little while, we we hear the the giggling. You, you know, we're not really seeing them. We're we're focusing on Jane and Robin. But the, yeah, that was. And let's see. Yeah, and we get the the detail. You know, Jane does love Robin. And I mean, I so yeah. The the thing about the the baby being black. I mean, I did. It was kind of amusing. What you know, Jane saying, "Don't look at me." Like you know, I wasn't the one who you know. As like, obviously, that's not. You know, yeah, she doesn't produce sperm, so it couldn't possibly have been her. But yeah, and yeah, Robin is in a wheelchair and she, you know they they did a really great job on the on the makeup you know very convincing as as she is you know slowly dying and yeah very very sweet when when Jane and and Robin sing and it is the you know when they met one of the first things that we saw them talk about was how both of them like to sing and you know Jane really did not care for for Robin's preferred songs and now you know she's she's actually singing for her something that you know is is really important to Robin very very sweet and the camera pans across first the room full of, of people who care about Robin and not long after the the empty room and I appreciate that the movie doesn't feel the need to like hammer home you know like Robin has died that's why the the chair is now empty you know and and we see Jane standing there looking at the the empty wheelchair you know we we don't need like a scene of her actually you know dying or or yeah so and yeah, very effective montage over the end credits. And I do really appreciate, you know, Jane and Holly and Abe still, you know, yeah, still still keep in touch and still have a, a positive relationship. And that's it for this one. So hit me up in the comments. What is your favorite female empowerment movie? If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page, one or two more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing small thoughts on a movie. I also do a weekly one talking about a horror thing. I am going to start season two of Ash vs. Evil Dead in just a few days. I also do... I, I try to do a daily one. Recently, it's been, yeah, I've usually been able to, to put one out per day of a Marvel TV show. I am early in Season 5 of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. right now. I'm doing all of them in the order that they originally, you know, yeah, came to, to TV. I did already do all the Netflix ones, so those. And right now, I don't have access to Runaways, but I check... Disney Plus every so often to see if they bring it back. I also do a weekly one about 
a Star Wars show, which these days is The Bad Batch Season 3, which I'm absolutely loving so far. And recently the Rune Thoughts videos to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if you more videos like this in your luck, you can check out my back catalog as well as catch me next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording. I'll catch you next time.